we really just got taken out by a dude named Keegan. Hey, hats off to Sacramento. You know, they um, they wanted it way more, right? Way more hungry, way more left in the tank at this point in the season. And, uh, yeah, I don't want to diminish their effort last night. Keon Ellis uh, and obviously Keegan Murray, what do you have, seven or eight threes? Um, I think I, we, possibly them, underestimated how little Steph had left in the tank. And I know the focus is going to be on Clay going 0 of 10. I just watched the game again this morning. I was up at 4.30 this morning just with my head spinning about it. You know, you just wake up early. The older you get, you wake up, it's over for you. You up, you up. <laughs> That's how it goes, right? But um, I just got done with my breakdown on Patreon and, you know, re-watching it painfully this morning. As bad as Clay was, Steph was just as bad, if not worse. And, you know, in the moment live, I, very frustrating with Clay. But when you rewatch like how it unfolds, you know, I think that there were some mistakes and some things that that went wrong. And, and, and oh, of 10 sounds bad, right? But in actuality, Clay only took 10 shots. He didn't force it really that much. He got a little frustrated at the end when we were down. But all in all, um, it was it was just a, a bad time for a bad game from Clay Thompson. Steph, on the other hand, um, I think whether it was consciously or subconsciously, probably a little bit of both, he didn't have the belief. He knew his body was run down. You know, the, it, it, the ankle, he'd sprained that twice in the last two weeks, right? And then you saw the photos of his, his thumb wrapped up going into this one. And I know Steph, in so many ways, is the anti-LeBron. So he's not gonna he's not gonna show up at the press conference with a cast on or anything like that, right? But um, some of those turnovers and some of the the hesitation in his shot, I thought he might have been having trouble gathering the ball with a, a thumb is so debilitating, right? Any other finger but the thumb. Um, I thought he had trouble gathering the ball at times, and then the beat that it took for him to kind of adjust in his hands, the window was gone because Keon Ellis and this Kings team, they swarmed him. And shout out to Mike Brown for showing the Warriors this ain't enough. Like, we, we'll just swarm Steph. Y'all ain't got enough. To me, Steph looked like he didn't believe from the start. You know, and he, you know, he's going to put on his game face and they need his presence. But I, I think he knew he didn't have it, right? And I, it's understandable. The season they've had, the injuries he's nursing at his age, you get why he, only a, a, a sane person would think, I don't got it. I, we don't have enough. And and you saw Sacramento just want it way more, had way more belief. And as understandable as it is to be in Steph's shoes and say, dang, I'm out of gas, right? It was not any easier to watch take place. Let's let's go back to Clay here because that's kind of the bigger subject right now, right? Um I thought there were some strategic mistakes if we want to get into it. I don't know how much it would have made a difference ultimately because I think the Kings just wanted it way more. I know that sounds like just like a cop out and cliche, but the 50-50 balls, the energy, the intensity, the Kings have a belief that they can get out of the play in and make a playoff run. I don't think our vets truly believed that. And I thought it showed up in the game, but let's get back to clay St strategy wise. The start of this game, Draymond takes Sabonis. And what does that do? It leaves Trace Jackson on Harrison Barnes or Keegan Murray or switching out and playing on the perimeter. That's mistake one, right? It doesn't make sense. You want your young rim protector to be able to sag off and control the paint and be at the rim. Now, I know that these are all kind of community decisions, but that kind of felt like a Draymond decision. Like, no, no, I got Sabonis. I got Sabonis, right? Cool. Strategically, it didn't make sense. But also putting Keegan Murray and Clay matched up. I say putting, putting Clay on Keegan Murray. Now I get it. There's not a ton of options, right? But the way he comes sprinting off those handoffs, those double screens, I think Clay's legs were spent pretty much in the first five minutes of this game because he had to chase over the top. You saw him blow the first coverage and Draymond sagged way off. It just, it felt like they just weren't prepared almost. I don't know, it, it, but they, they weren't dialed in and focused to start. But putting him on Keegan, having him chase Keegan around off all those handoffs and you compound that with 
the frenetic pace of that first quarter in that first half, I think Clay's legs were smoked. Now, as an excuse, it's a bad spot for a bad, bad game, right? But I don't, I'll put it to you like this. I said it in the breakdown. I think there, there have been way worse games for Clay this year where he was really just being an asshole and being selfish. And it was like, dude, Clay, you can't take 22 shots when you're shooting this way. And the, But it wasn't really that. Now, again, he forced some stuff a little bit later when they went on that run, but he, he, tried, to, he tried to keep good body language and it was just a bad game for him, man. It was just a bad game for him. All that said, was that the last game of this big three, right? And according to Kerr, he wants to run it back. CP, everyone, we absolutely, right? Kerr's just doing his job, right? It's not his job to, to leave the, the, the door open and the window open. We're going to speculate anyway. So Kerr's going to say what he's going to say. When it came to Steph's quotes, right, that he just wants to win, whatever that looks like, I translated that as mother F the big three, it's big me. <laughs> no, you know, I, I don't know if that was like kind of the, 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 the final bat signal of like, okay, right? It, it, it's like sometimes I think it takes a performance like this to gain clarity. And that's why, again, as painful as it was to watch, I think, it, I think it's a positive that they went down in flames and it looked so ugly. Because now moving into this offseason definitively, they know that this isn't good enough and, and then you can't just run this back. As far as Clay goes, I, I, I've, I've gone back and forth and watching the season play out and just trying to think with my head, not my heart, all these things. Ultimately, I've come to this conclusion that even if Clay took a super discount, 12 million per at two years or whatever, I, I think the years may be the issue. I, I think that it's best for both of both parties to move on at this point because Clay is so beloved amongst this team and what he means to this organization, he can't be judged objectively, right? He's always going to be treated with almost too much respect. And we understand why, right? But again, even if he's like, I'm 12 mil per, I'm going to come off the bench, it's still Clay. It's still Clay. He's it, it, and I don't know how you get around that. You know what I'm saying? And it, it's time to give Moses Moody his opportunity. Otherwise, trade him. It, you know, otherwise trade him. But I, I just I I know even if Clay says he's willing to play a, a six man role and take this, I think that it's it's going to be almost impossible for this team to truly adapt into the future and move on with his presence, because again, it, it, his status. He, he he's it's always even if he's the seventh or eighth guy it's clay thompson man it, it, i don't know it, do you see what i'm saying and so uh, as tough as it is and i'm and i'm not even holding this performance against him i just think that ultimately it, it's time it's time to move on for for both parties let's talk a little bit of the positive here because moses moody the young guys i think were the positive in this game as far as trace jackson goes um what do you play 11 minutes and that was the fear you saw my picks yesterday. That was the fear. And again, I think that the problem was you had to stick him on Sabonis so he could just run up and down the court with Sabonis and he, would, he wouldn't have got all out of sorts. He was a little sped up early on, but the, the entire team was. The entire game was frenetic and, and, and Kerr never really uh, gave him the opportunity to settle back in and, and have an impact and not surprised, right? I'm not surprised. But, um, you know, I, I, saw, I saw it trending on Twitter. Shout out Warrior Spaces and those guys that Nick Wright was in there. And I, I saw I saw it was all over Twitter. Oh, Nick Wright was serving these guys on. And I, I heard like a little snippet of it. I don't think anyone was saying Trace Jackson playing heavy minutes was going to have the Warriors make a, a, a run to the title. I know for me, what I've been what I was saying is it, it would have made a difference maybe in that game last night, a play-in game. We're not talking about a, a playoff run, right? But it was unfortunate that he didn't get, a, I think, a longer leash, more of an opportunity to, to settle into the game. But nonetheless, the young guys. Moses Moody comes in. It, it's funny because when he was in, when it, they come back from a break and Moody's in, you're like, oh, you know, this ain't going according to plan. You know that you know there's no way Moody's minutes were scheduled. It was like things have gone wrong. And it's funny because... You know, there's been such an inconsistent role for Moses this year. It's been unfair to him. 
It's been unfair. And that's why I, I tried not to judge him big picture because I get the rhythm of a player and especially a shooter. It's been unfair. But say what you want. It's been three years now. Whenever he gets stuck and thrown in, thrust into a playoff series, he shows up. He plays. Now, I know this isn't technically a playoffs, but it was the same consequences, right? And and it's, and it's you always hear how steady Moody is, how, how mature, how calm he is. And you see, I think, that advantage. You may not see it in a January game, right, when limited minutes. But when you put him in high-stakes playoff game, Moody is always Moody. And he holds that value. And so, again, I'm not holding this single game up against Clay. I just think it's going to be hard for them to move into the future with his presence here. And going down in flames like this, I think maybe is, is a moment of clarity for Steph and the front office that big changes need to happen, right? And we'll have time to plenty of time now that they're not in the playoffs, right? To talk about those changes and what ifs and what ifs. The bottom line is everyone should be on the table, not name Steph Curry. The one thing that I'm not super fond of is I get it. I get it that he signed up for, for this Olympics here. Is it in Paris? I, I totally get it, right? Because it's one of those opportunities, legacy things where you, you can't, you don't want to take that away from him, but you just watch how run down and beat up he is right now for him to, you know, he's got a bunch of golf on the docket and then he's going to go and do that. Like, what does he look like showing up in training camp? Anyway, I'll be covering the Olympics on my patron as well as the rest of the playoffs. Those of you shout out that have supported the channel and, and the patrons um, that have been asking, Hey, what about covering another team? Well, you got it. Now that we're not in the playoffs, I'm going to just hop around and cover other big games all the way up into the finals. Then I'll just cover the entire finals. And so it's a great way to support me by hopping on there. $2 a month. It's well worth it. I, I put a ton of uh, uh, work and heart into it. And I'm, I'm kind of excited. I'm kind of excited to, to take a look at some of these other teams because I know a lot of you feel this way. We, we were put out of our misery last night. You know what I mean? And, and I think that's what they felt. They felt it that way too. There was relief. It was relief because th th this season was not fun. It was not fun. It was filled with tragedy, ups and downs, roller coasters. It just wasn't a fun year to cover. And I, I, I'm sure it wasn't a fun year for the players, you know? And so let them charge up and, and, and have an extended off season. Well, except for Steph, it, it, it was better to be put out of our misery now than I think to find ourselves in the playoffs. And it was, it was never going to happen. Now, we may find our way into this first round of this draft, knowing Lacob and how much he likes to draft. So I'm going to cover all things Warriors all through the offseason. We got Summer League um, and all sorts of stuff. But again, here, I would love y'all's support on the channel as I cover the rest of the playoffs. Give your boy the view. Give your boy the view. I understand that this is a, a Warriors channel, but um, I hope that you can continue to support, whether it's on YouTube, on Patreon, or both. But let me finish with something positive here as far as the Warriors go. Again, the youngsters. I talked about Moody. You saw what he did, got to the line, the steady hand of Moses Moody at 21 years old, always ready. Pajemski. Pajemski, the, the young guys, that's the positive. The young guys were ready for this moment. It's essentially a game seven, right? It's a, it's a one-off. And the young guys were ready to play. They had their energy there. And, and Kaminga, listen, he had to settle down a little bit. But I think that eventually he did. And I thought it was a big deal that, he, what did he have? Three or four mid-rangers, Sabonis, they were sagging off him. The fact that he was confident enough and comfortable enough to get into that mid-range game in a game seven, essentially, in a playoff game, I think we got to feel really good about that. Because I, that there's so many young kind of suspect, maybe shooter guys where you get on that stage and all of a sudden they ain't taking it. And so I thought that that was a good sign. And I thought that he, you know, he was overzealous initially. But all in all, I liked the look in his eyes. I liked the look in all the young guys' eyes and their, their posture, their body language in this moment. They showed well. So I think that that can't be lost despite, you know, all the, all the morbid talk of, of, of the death of a dynasty. But yeah, man, you know, as hard as that was to watch them go down in that fashion, I think the big picture, it's a positive because they definitively have seen that things have to change. Now, what those changes will be, again, 
we'll be here talking about it. But I, I can't lie, I'm relieved. I'm relieved. It's been a long season. But uh, again, please continue to support the channel. I'll be back with playoff picks, coverage, live streams, and then full game breakdowns of the big ones on the Patreon. Hit that like, share, and subscribe. I'm out, y'all.